people don't like Chuck. Uh, Yeah. Why don't Kids? you go to the other one? <laughs> okay, I'll go, go to the other one. Okay, for sure, for sure. Instead of going to the other one, what a mess you made here. This is a mess, isn't it? Okay, the simplest example of a complex trinomial is of the following form. Okay, this, this is the one I usually start off with. So the simplest form is 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Now, the way this works is if you've got something like this, the first thing you would do is look for a GCF where you can take out the 2. Now, in this case, you can't take out a GCF. You can't take the, you know, take the 2 outside the bracket, you know, put a bracket there where you can get the x squared by itself, okay? So this is the way you end up factoring is You can use the quadratic formula, but if, uh, you know, if, uh, it's easy, it's quicker to do things manually uh, if you get things that are simple like this, okay? So the first thing you do, step number one for complex trinomial factoring is you take the two and you multiply it by the three and you drop it from the, from the, next, from the next statement, okay? From the next step. So you're gonna grab the two, multiply it by three, and that number replaces your C term and you're going to drop the 2, whatever the number was, in front of the x squared. So your next line becomes... Okay, so now you got x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, this now becomes a simple trinomial. We can factor this, and this is one of the first things we factored in the simple trinomial section, right? So all you do... Put your brackets in, and if you factor those two numbers that give you six, multiply to give you six, and add to give you five, that's two and three, we've already talked about this. So what you do is positive two and positive three. So you're gonna go plus two, plus three. Those are your two numbers in there. The x squared, you're gonna break down into x times x. Right? So this is step number two. Step number one, you take the two, multiply it by the three, drop the two in the front, and you have your, you, you, you replace your C with whatever the multiplication of those two terms were. Step number two, you factor, you know, just simple trinomial, because as soon as you do that, it becomes a simple trinomial, and your next step is a simple trinomial, right? So step number two is you factor your simple trinomial the way you factor simple trinomials, right? Step number three, you take the number, that you took the coefficient in front of the x squared and you put it back in front of the x terms after you factored the simple trinomial. So the two here, gets dropped back in here, okay? So right now you're gonna have two x and two x. So you got two x plus two, two x plus three, okay? Step number four, you look at both these terms, okay, and you take out the GCF and you dump it. You get rid of it, okay. And this is the only time where, when this is equal to zero, and uh, we'll get into it when we're trying to solve for it, the dumping part makes sense because all you do, you factor out the GCF, you bring it out here and you divide by, the, you know, the term in front, whatever the number is, and you divide the other side since it's zero. Zero divided by a number is just is zero, right? So it gets rid of it. When it comes to the factoring, keep this in mind, this is the only time where you can take out the GCF to the front and dump it. So what you have now, there's a GCF here. The GCF for 2x and 2 is just 2. So you're going to take out the 2, it comes up to the front, and you dump it. Okay. So your next line becomes... So if you take out a 2 from this, that's just x. If you take out a 2 from that, that's just 1. So this becomes x plus 1. Now you can think about it, there's a 2 here right now, but it's going to be, you're going to get rid of it, right? So there is a 2, you took the 2 out, but it's dumped. So you take out a GCF from here, and you take out a GCF from here. And if there is no GCF, that term remains, okay? So there is no GCF between the 2x and the 3, so it just becomes 2x plus 3. Okay. 
Now this x plus 1 times 2x plus 3 is a top guy factored. If you multiply this out, you're going to end up with that term right there. Okay. Now we'll foil this out, right? So this is the four step method. Step number one, take the coefficient, the number in front of the x squared, and multiply it by c. Drop it in the next term, and whatever the number was that you multiplied it by becomes your c term. Factor your second line just the same way you would a simple trinomial because it is now a simple trinomial. You took the coefficient in front of the x squared and put it with the c, right? You can factor that out. Step, that's step number two, step number three, you take whatever it was that you factored out and you drop it back in front of the x terms in your factor of the simple trinomial. From there, you take out a GCF and dump it. And whatever, you re whatever remains, whatever you end up with, is the top guy factor, okay? It's as simple as that. It's a brilliant little uh, algorithm, I guess. It's, it's, it's automatic. You don't even have to do any thinking, right? Just take the number, multiply it out, factor that out, put the number back in, GCF out, dump it. That's your, that's, that's your, fact, that's your uh, complex trinomial factored at the bottom, okay? We'll do a couple of more examples. Um, it's, again, it's, it's a really simple method, but we'll end up doing a couple of more examples and hopefully it makes sense. And you should try, a, you know, you should try this technique on a lot, a lot of examples. If, you, if you're gonna do, do it for a bit, if you're gonna get good at this, you should be able to, you know, do a fair bit of practice. And again, when it comes to factoring uh, trinomials or anything, factoring anything, you're gonna have to know your multiplication table because you know, we talked about this in the simple trinomial section. Super important to know your multiplication table because you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you C and add to give you the middle term. And your multiplication table, you start off with that one because there are, there are less combinations of um, integers to multiply to give you 6 than there are that add to give you 5. Okay? There's an infinite number of these. There, there isn't an infinite number of integers anyway that multiply to give you six, but there's an infinite number of integers that add to give you five, okay? So you always start off with the multiplication and you look for your two numbers through the multiplication and test to see if they equal the, you know, the coefficient in front of your middle term. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is whenever you get, get uh, trinomials like this, you wanna put it with des descending order. So your highest order X goes in the, in, you know, it's your first term, it goes in the front, and then decreasing order coming down. 